Here at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum, we're talking again with Larry Wood, who is the Director of Education for the facility. And we've just been playing with the uh, great big red button on the wall that simulates the launch of a Titan II missile, which is a uh, real trip back to the Cold War and more recently too. Larry, tell us first of all, how do you get hold of this cool hardware? How do you get signed off to receive this stuff? Well, some of it we had made for especially by the Cosmosphere in Kansas, uh, a big museum in Kansas. Some of it we got, again, it's on loan from the Air Force, and that's where the Titan itself came from. We do have the real missile out there. At one point in its life, it sat in a tunnel in a tube in Arkansas with a, a nuclear warhead on it. And then after one of the original salts was demilled and, and given to NASA to use as a, a launch vehicle for missile launch. And so this is the facility from Vandenberg Air Force Base. It's the real facility. The right stuff is really here. Floor tiles, ceiling tiles, books, councils, even the coffee cups are from Vandenberg. All right, now tell us about the Titan program. I know it ended in 2005, but when did it start? It had a long run. Oh yeah, the Titan I was the original uh, Titan, and that was the one of the first liquid-fueled intercontinental ballistic missiles. And that one didn't have a very successful launch rate, it wasn't man-proof or man, what, there's a word for that, where you could actually uh, certify it to put a human in front of it. Uh, so the Titan II came along, and that was actually used to launch the Geminis back in the mid-60s, the two-man capsules. The major objective there being to do extravehicular activity, EVA, and to do a rendezvous in space, which of course you had to be able to do those things to go to the moon. And so this is the step between Mercury and, and then on into uh, to Apollo to go to the moon is Gemini and Titan IIs were used to launch Gemini. And as you said, they continued to launch satellites with Titan IIs up until 2005. So there were lots and lots of Titan shots, Titan one, two, threes, and then fours, uh, the latter ones. This is a Titan II. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. Tell us about the simulator that's been built here. This is really kind of amazing. A few moments ago when we were test firing it, the walls shake, the floor shakes, the equipment rattles, the coffee cups move around. This was a considerable project. Oh, this is really an neat thing. First of all, it's the right stuff. It really is the 60s, uh, 70s technology brought here from Vandenberg, put together. We have two countdowns. One is a five-minute countdown that we do with normal people that, you know, tourists that come through. We have a longer version, which is a 20-minute countdown that we do with middle school and high school kids. And they actually sit at the councils and have a checklist that they have to read through. If they don't do it 100% correctly, when it gets to zero, nothing happens, which is, you know, why you got to pay attention what's going on. They do push the buttons on the consoles, and there is feedback to them. Lights come on, lights go off, all that stuff is hooked up. So it's quite realistic. And when it does launch, you'll feel it. And as it tips over, as it starts to go onto the, the level part where it goes out and it get into orbit, it'll actually, it gets much louder. The exhaust is pointed right at you and you can really feel the building shake then. Very, very realistic from people that I know that have been to the Titan uh, site and said, that's what it sounds like, that's what it feels like. Now the visual track that runs during the simulation is from an actual fairly late model launch of a Titan carrying a weather satellite. Yes, it is a Titan II, just like the one we have out here, and it does have the, the satellite cover on the nose, just like the one we have, and then it is a weather satellite, and I can't remember the exact date, but it was in the middle of the program somewhere, and it's really from Vandenberg itself, so just like we were watching it real. Now back in the Cold War, there was a distinct difference in philosophy between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Uh, about how they built and intended to use their nuclear warheads. The U.S. had good targeting, smaller warheads. The Soviets seemed to rely on close enough is good enough and very large warheads. But by our standards, 
nine megatons was a fairly large warhead used on the Titan. This is a city buster. It was designed to uh, send up a very, very big warhead, and again, doesn't have the accuracy. Later on, we went to the MIRVs, the multi-independently uh, target uh, vehicles, and those have smaller warheads, and those could be aimed at much, much smaller targets, and that was kind of a, a difference in what we wanted to do. And that really comes from the change in nuclear strategy from massive retaliation in the Eisenhower years to flexible response under Kennedy. Much, much different idea. You have to have a lot more little warheads if you're going to do flexible response. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system, with its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. If someone has a group of middle or high school kids and wants to come and do this and are going to be in the Pacific Northwest, if they wanted to bus in from somewhere else, can they make arrangements to do it on a schedule or do you just have to be here at the right time? No, no, we'll, uh, we schedule you. Uh, if you come in here uh, as a school group, first of all, there's a, a special price for school groups and I do have some scholarships available. We'll do one in the Aviation Museum, we'll do one over here, we'll do one in both. If you come to the Space Museum and your middle school or high school, we're going to bring you, take you through a little training first, about five minutes, ten minutes with a computer, bring you down here in groups of 14 to 16, and you'll get to shoot one, and it takes 20 minutes a crack, while the other part of the group will be learning about surviving in space, living in space, and how rockets work, and all the normal education programs that we have running here in the museum. It's a very, very good program, and I'm very, very proud of how it works. And I got a great team of teachers to help me. Well, I don't think there's any way to really appreciate the Cold War and the tensions that it involved for the local citizens of both sides without visiting something like this and seeing what the potential was to really happen. And we appreciate you guys for putting this together and making it available. Well, we like to think this is more space-oriented, but you're right. It was an intercontinental ballistic missile. When uh, President Eisenhower made a decision to use a peacetime missile to, uh, to launch our space program, and that was Vandenberg, which failed, and so we did what the Russians did. We went to our ballistic missiles, and those are what got us into space until we got to the Saturn. And of course, the Saturn was Werner von Braun again, uh, and that was his uh, culminating project was Saturn and the Apollo project to the moon. Well, we appreciate your explaining it all to us, and I'm gonna go on a tour and find out what all these buttons do. Okay, you're welcome to do that, and thanks again for visiting, Paul.